Hello, and welcome to Shampoo and Booze, a podcast about Airbnb and short-term rentals at shampooandbooze.com. We are Ryan and Ashley, sisters who run Airbnbs and want to help you run yours. Every week, we cover topics about the design and operation of short-term rentals. Send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to cover the topics that you care about. We are also available to give design and listing advice for your Airbnb or short-term rental. Check out our services page at notperf.com to book a time with us. Okay, hello. Welcome to episode 72. Ryan and I are in a room together. It's a miracle. A podcasting miracle. It's a podcasting Christmas miracle. (laughs) (laughs) Shampoo booze miracle. Uh, So we wanted to talk about furniture sourcing, which is often a question that we get around, you know, where do I find furniture that is affordable, nice, well-made, not cheap, not from a dorm? <laughs> like, how is that possible? We're like, that's a Christmas miracle. Okay. Yes, exactly. No, no actually, I mean, uh, I feel like a huge part of our like thrifty, scrappy sensibility is about where do you find those things? You know, what do you look for? How do you know you found something that's nice? And how do you think about fitting it into either an existing space or a space that you're designing? Yes. There are many things to think about. It's, it, people go to school for stuff like this. They go to school for design, you know? And, and yeah, it's not easy to be like, there's so many, so many rentals that I see where, yeah, they did just, where we live, you just go to Walmart. And they're like, yeah, I just like got a dining room table and beds at Walmart. Done. (laughs) <laughs> Which, you know, for you some can rentals, tell. you can do that. And look, and you can actually get little things here and there like that. But um, I also, like, there was a time where we stayed in Amsterdam, fancy me, and the whole thing was Ikea. Uh, and you're like, okay, Ikea, I get a ton of stuff from Ikea, like, no doubt. But every single thing, you're like, they went to Ikea, they rented a truck, they brought it back to this apartment. <laughs> it, everything was gray and from Ikea. And you're like, I feel like I'm in an Ikea store, you know? Yeah. No, but their their designs are gorgeous. They like are. They're little fake apartments. You're like, yes. wow, that's not what this feels like. But um, They're so, fake apartments. You know what they I mean? They should Airbnb out Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> I think I read a story one time where like um, the Ikeas in China, people were actually taking naps there Aww. and being like... That's sort of adorable. They're like, this is so comfy. They were like, and then nap time. <laughs> I think what helps me is I'm an eBay seller, as a lot of people know. And so I'm like sourcing stuff all the time. And before we started doing Airbnb, we were like, we go to estate sales, we go to, we go on Craigslist, we go on, um, you know, yard sales or, uh, flea markets, you know, you like, you're just like, what's cool here? Like, what is interesting here? What's not from Ikea? What's not from, um, so and you're already like that anyway. Like, that's how you fill your apartment. Um, you know, also, like, when you're in college, you're like, someone gave me a couch. and somebody... Now, that stuff is super scrappy, but, like, you get an eclectic mix of things um, that can work together and be interesting. And one of the ways about thinking about things that work together versus feeling like you're staying somewhere on the side of the road, you know, <laughs> is that you think about you know, what era was something made in, right? Right. So if you're, if you have a lot of things that are sort of American primitive, you know, they're right. like Antique very primitive, rough wood, you right. know, they farmhouse rustic, farmhouse rustic. They don't have a lot of detail actually. They're like, you know, boxes and right. benches and right. tables that are very rustic. You know, they don't have a lot of like ornate filigree kind of details. Right. So that's one look, right? But then if you have other things that are like 1980s leather couches that are like overstuffed. I'm literally looking at one right now. Yeah. Um, So (laughs) that's very different than like antique primitive, right? So if you're going for a look or you're going for a feel, stay as consistent as you can. I think that there are ways of mixing and matching those things, but not everybody knows how to do it. And it can be done in a way that feels too out of sorts too eclectic yes i'm too quirky like i feel like i go to places sometimes where i'm like 
this is interesting with this, but then like there's too much of it. So that's talking about the design side. I think also part of it too is it's it's what you're saying. Like when you're seeing like in air quotes, like American primitive, like farmhouse chic or whatever, you don't just want that because I have been, like I was saying about the Ikea place. I've also been to places where everything is like, yeah, shabby chic. Like they've got the fake barn wood look everywhere like like fake barn wood slash steampunk thing and you're like every single room is like this like have a little bit like you can have things go together and source things from other you know like yeah you got the antique farmhouse table from like the flea market but you have kind of a mid-century modern room you know like our living room's more mid-century modern but you're in a different room so you kind of like but that also has like some leather chairs so it's not mad you're not in mad men but you have like a couple other pieces you know that you're mixing and they're similar colors or they have similar patterns so they're like kind of fitting together even though they're like different eras you know exactly so some of the ways you can tie things together are through colors yeah are through wood tone you can think about artwork tying things together just in terms of where you get things I think something that we're doing that helps us is generally if we've bought a property, we're renovating. So we actually have a bunch of time to start gathering things. And when things can fit together and feel like a a collection, usually it's because you had a little bit of time to gather it. The times where I felt like uh, this feels like Ikea house is when we've like run out of time, like for the apartment and it's not bad, but at the apartment we were like, we need a chair, we need a side table, we need a lamp. And we're like, we have to get them at Ikea. And when I'm at Ikea though, I try to pick out the things that aren't just classic Ikea. Like there are things at Ikea that have been at Ikea since like Ikea started, which was in the 1950s. So you're like, um, you can pick them out. The Poong chair. You're yes. like, yo, that's Ikea. I do have some Poong chairs. I have two Poong chairs. Yes. It's like the classic Ikea chair. And those are okay sometimes. But it's like if I just had those or I just had the whatever lamp that they like always have. You know, I have some of those, but not every room and not every house. You know, I'm like, oh, that's new this season. And they're probably getting rid of it next season. I'm going to get that. And then no one's going to be like, oh, that's so obviously Ikea. You're like, nobody knows where that's from. So, yeah, it is. It's taking the time to be like when you see it's something that's it's tough because I saw a table the other day and Jay was like, I love this table. I must have this table. And I'm just like. We have no place to put this. Um, it's it was twelve hundred dollars, which is a little on the high end for a table. But some t- some pieces are pricey. If you're like, this is gonna make this rental. Like people are gonna be like, it's this a, table. Exactly, it's a statement it's a, piece. It's a statement piece. But so the problem was, I'm like, we're gonna hold on to this for how long? For what? But there are times where you're like, I do have storage space. This would look amazing in the upcoming place. And it's going to look cool with this, you know, bedspread or whatever. Let's just get it. It's hard to think ahead of time because you're spending money ahead of time, you know? And again, so we just did an episode about wear and tear. So it's like how to make an investment in a piece of furniture. That's going to be a signature piece that might get damaged. Right. So it's like that total fine line of like you put in something beautiful, it's going to make or break a space, but also it might get a little scratched. So the cool thing about buying, I don't want to say shabby chic because it's not shabby chic, but like kind of primitive or farmhouse style things like a table. This was a, this was a reclaimed table. It was actually, I think it was like a, a German tractor trailer floor, um, but it was like hardwood it was like hard blonde wood um like maple or something but it was already scratched up but exactly so yes. it was already like that was the look but mm-hmm. it had and it had these gorgeous um metal legs that they had like custom built mm. and we were like it actually doesn't matter if someone scratches this or s- even stains it because that's part of the look that's not cool. everything you yes. know not everything you're like let's just have like messed up wood everywhere like mm-hmm. of course not but for something where you're like a table, 
little kids are like drying on yes, it and like exactly. they're spilling things and like you know someone put a hot mug down and whatever those are easy things to fix on a surface like rustic wood right it's gonna it's gonna last right yeah it's funny the thing i had in my head was like a danish modern teak table right. you know which right. again it's like if you feel like in your own home you would have to sort of baby it You know, whether it's a coffee table or, you know, something that's a sort of higher end wood furniture piece. Yeah. Someone's going to put a wine glass on it without a coaster. Like that's going to happen. Right. And so you're trying to source things. And like we've talked about before, you know, you don't want to go to West Elm and buy like a brand new, you, you can't afford it because it's too expensive. Um, if you're running a high-end place like that, you're making a lot of money, so you're fine. But for most of us, you're not like, okay, West Elm, give me this whole... <laughs> give me this room. <laughs> right, like give me this room. You're like, okay, that's not attainable. But you're looking for things that, I, I think everything I buy, with the exception of Ikea stuff, it's used. Yes, Or me it's too. on, like I just bought a chair at, West Elm, um, we were at a West Elm randomly and we had our truck and we were like, this is on sale, on sale, on sale, on sale. Like when you look at their sale price and they keep crossing it out and Mm -hmm. making it lower and you're like, I don't know what's wrong with this. It looks brand new. So we bought a chair for, I think it was like $130, but I'm like $130 for a brand new West Elm chair. That's a $700 chair sold with, um, it had this. So the thing was about the fabric It felt like this really soft um, cotton chenille. It was like light, dusty pink, which is not usually what I buy, but I was like, it's going to look perfect with this rug that I have. It's actually polyester. Hmm. So you're like, anything that gets spilled on that, you just wipe it with a wet cloth and it's fine. I'm like, I'll spend money on that, you know? Yes, exactly. So it was, it's not a silk chair. I'm sure you can buy silk chairs at West Elm. Mm -hmm. Not going to buy a silk chair. Do you, do you? (laughs) It's just like, so those are the kind of sourcing things where it's something that we talk about too. Don't be afraid to switch things out. This was in a room where we had a different chair that could go somewhere else. I was like, that chair could go in any other room, but this chair matches perfectly with this rug. I do have to retake the photo in that room, but it brings that room's level up. It matches perfectly with the um, the rug, which came from like Wayfair, and then the bedspread came from Ikea. So in that whole room, plus we have like a vintage painting on the wall. You know, that's just a good example. Plus the bed was from West Elm. The bed frame was from West Elm that we bought on Craigslist from someone for like a hundred bucks. You're like, Ta-da. There's my room. So uh, Craigslist is a big one. Craigslist is huge. If you're in, uh, if you're near an urban area, I'm in a rural area, but we're close enough that like we'll make special trips. There are people with money who will buy a beautiful bed from Room and Board or West Elm brands I'd never heard of like six years ago. I'm like CB2, what? CB2, which is Crate and Barrel Two. It's like their modern line. They're like, I bought this a year ago for $800. I have to move because I'm getting restationed for my job. Or we live near DC, so it's like government contractors get moved around all the time. It's $100. You're like, yes. You're like, I will take it immediately off your hands. Now, I do want to say this. This is super taboo, and people are going to be like, you what? I buy used mattresses. One of the amazing things that can happen is people like the one I just mentioned where they're like, I bought this at West Elm a a year year ago ago. for my guest room. Yes. And you can specifically ask them this too, or you can see it in the photos. If they use one of those, um, waterproof zip up, like, I guess they're like bed bug proof covers on the mattress. It covers the entire mattress. You're like, it's almost like it's never been used. That's where I found mine. Mine was you found. I mine. found it. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan like, searched on Craigslist for my city in, in and Boston. found my bed, my guest bed, and it was a guest bed. Right. And it had never. It basically was brand new. It had never been touched. It had a full zip on vinyl, much whatever. Hadn't been slept on. You can even get rid of that cover. You're like, if you're gonna be super, you know, crazy about it, you're like, throw the cover away, get a new one. You basically have a brand new mattress. Yeah, I mean, they're they're out there. Like, obviously, don't buy from college <laughs> students. That's yeah. not recommended. Yeah, like, but there there's stuff out there that's totally workable. Like professional people. You got your so. 
okay, your bed in your guest room, it's mm-hmm. a West Elm bed frame mm-hmm. with gorgeous, like, modern, funky um, headboard, mm-hmm. brand new mattress. It was $20. Yes. And, and, and I wrote to the woman because I was like, you were looking for a bigger bed. You are you had a full. You wanted a I wanted queen. I wanted a queen. Yeah. Um, which is perfect for that room. You got, I, I think I wrote to her and I was like, I don't understand why this is $20. First of all, if you can give away a bed of that quality for $20, Just give why don't you give it away for, for free? free? Why yeah. do you need 20 bucks? I know. Well, when I went to go, when I went to go pick it up, you know, I had to dismantle it. She didn't, she didn't know how to dismantle it. Well, this That's is why 20 bucks. This, right? She didn't know it's how to dismantle $100. it. She didn't want to move it. You know, she was basically just like, just come get this it. bed. Yeah. And I remember asking her like, why are you putting, I was like, did we read this right? Is, is it, it $200 or is it $200? Yeah, no. And she was like, no, 20, $20. And I was like, why? And she was like, honestly, I just want it gone. But she was like, I didn't want to put it in for free because then people would think something was wrong with it. That is so It's just funny. funny. People's psychology around this stuff is so funny. You know, it's like, it's true. I wouldn't have looked for a free mattress. Yeah. What? You're like gross. Exactly. <laughs> And so what? it worked, you know, her thinking yeah. worked, but it was also quite odd. And I paid her 20 bucks for brandy new. That's like, eight, that's like 800 to a thousand dollars. She did. She had, she probably spent over a thousand dollars for that bed. You have like, so that's, what's so funny, right? You're like, my guest room has like a nicer bed than I have. Yes. To me, that's where sourcing is important because you're like, it takes time. It takes effort. You had to write I had to this to lady. Go, I yeah. had to go to her place. It I wasn't white glove service. It. No, I had to dismantle it. I had, I borrowed our dad's truck. Right. You know, I had to, it was, thankfully it was on a first floor Thank apartment, God. but you know, it took a couple hours. Mattresses are heavy. Yeah. It was like, you know, it was an ordeal for sure. Was it worth it? Yes. Yes. It was worth it. It was worth it. Yeah. So it was worth it. that is definitely a taboo subject, but for me, uh, one of the beds I bought, so it was, I did buy it brand new from Ikea. Um, but it was a, it was our first rental. It was the perfect bed for the space. It's this king size bed that has drawers underneath and a headboard that has storage. I'm like, Oh, thank God. Right. So I think it's $500. So that was one of the situations where I'm like, I am going to buy a new bed, but it was one of those things where we needed a very specific um, layout and we were like, well, it's five hundred dollars like total. That's like a weekend rental once. Well, I was so. just gonna say that. Just run your numbers, right? Run like numbers. run your numbers. Like really think about you know. And if it starts to eke into okay, it's gonna take me a month of rentals to pay this off. Like, is it worth it? You know, right, like, right, just right, right. run like, your numbers. <laughs> um, we have these next door neighbors that got married this like five years ago. Um, this newlywed, very young couple. And uh, they did this thing where they were like, well, we bought all our furniture at the furniture store. Like whatever. It's like one of these big furniture mm-hmm, stores, mm-hmm. Right? right? It's like brand right, new right. furniture. And they were like, <laughs> I love that you, I, I'm like, what is it called? It's a furniture, furniture store. store. <laughs> like, I'm like, that's, yes, yes. continue, Ryan. That's a, that's a thing. That is a thing. They didn't just pick it up off the side of the road. <laughs> um, and they were like, we paid $6,000 for our bedroom set. Um, it was like a, you know, a wood, you know, whatever yeah, side like table. Matching like matching bedroom set. Yeah, like whatever. Six pieces. Yeah. yeah. Like it, you see them on like commercials. Yes, you're like, exactly. what? Um, and they're like, it's oh. a sleigh bed. Right. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's a sleigh bed. It's a sleigh bed. With matching mahogany, like vanity, whatever. I don't even know what it is. And um, <laughs> Jay was like, they're going to be paying that off forever. And it's just like, you know, because they're young and they're yeah. like, we just got our first jobs they're that right. young and um we were like why you don't have to do that you, you do don't have to pay six thousand dollars a room to do that i mean that's just not so don't like and here's the cool thing so there are times when we switch things out at yes. one point i was very naive in our first rental and i had like a pull-out sofa bed for one of the main beds right not necessary eventually jay was like this thing sucks and we can put a queen bed in here. Like, they don't need a couch in this room. Mm-hmm. It's a bedroom, right, right? Right, right, It's not big enough for a couch. We'll put some chairs, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I resold that thing on Craigslist. I think I bought it on Craigslist, cleaned it up, 
um, you know, put a nicer like mattress cover thing and whatever. Uh, and then I sold it, I think for the exact price because it was a discontinued yes. like Ikea model that certain people are like, that was my favorite one. And they stopped making it, mm-hmm. you know, um, I think I paid like 200, $250 for it. And then I sold it for that much three years later. That what? is exactly it. And I've, I was able to pay for the bed that yes, I brought in. There is so much furniture just in my house alone that I was like, I'm going to buy this. It's not super expensive, but I know I could probably sell this for a profit. Right. Like, I'm going to take good care of it. Right. It's like, you know, mid-century modern. Right. People love this stuff. Yeah. And I'm going to sell it for a profit in like 10 years. Right. Like when I decide to switch it out or it's not practical or I move. Exactly. So that's the great thing about having sort of like timeless styles too. That's something Jay and I are like obsessed with is like we want things, you know, mid-century modern is a trend, but it's like one of those things where you're like, it's been a trend since like a 1950. So it's persistent. It's kind of like, okay, it's sticking around. Where I want things that are like, that comes from a certain era, but it looks like it could be from different times and it's just always going to look good. Yes. Because you can resell it. And also, it doesn't look trendy or weird. Like, there are certain things that I see. Like a 1980s, 1990s leather recliner, leather couch. recliner couch. That I'm like, that is already dated. Like you might have just bought that brand new at the furniture store in air quotes. <laughs> um, but you're like, it's already dated. Like mm-hmm. it's not a classic style. It's not like someone's gonna look at that and be like, oh, that's from ten years ago. Yeah, you like know? you just you almost can name it in a way <laughs> like, that is just yeah. I see. So we're you know talking about sourcing used, sourcing mm-hmm. on Craigslist, going to the thrift store, going mm-hmm. to the whatever. Do not be the people who are like. I saw a photo from myself from when we used to live at like this house that was like super dated. And I was sitting in a recliner that was like pastel tapestry, um, lazy boy recliner. I'm like, that's from the nineties. Like (laughs) you're just like, that's from 1997. Like in 1997, don't buy things from 1997. (laughs) Unless it's like (laughs) something that's very special. Or it's just like a bookcase, (laughs) (laughs) a wooden bookcase. Yeah. But so it's things like that. And I've seen so many rentals where you're like, here's a pastel velour with <laughs> oh, oak. No. You're like, no, 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 that's never, ever. It wasn't cool it then. It wasn't cool then. It wasn't not cool, cool now. now. So I have a question. I know that you sell furniture occasionally yes. on eBay. Yes, I sell furniture on eBay. Do you search for furniture on eBay? Um, that feels like a mysterious area to me. There are some things I've searched. So with eBay, I mean, you're searching the whole world, essentially, with eBay. So you need to look for... It's like Craigslist, but you need to look for stuff that you can go pick up. Yes. Or you have to be willing to get it shipped to you. Um, so that's why it's different. But I've been looking for... There's a couple mid-century chairs that I was like, you know, we need a little something in this area, you know, in this corner somewhere. And Jay's been talking to someone in D.C. So D.C. is doable, but for some reason, they don't have it on Craigslist. They don't have it on Facebook. They it's on just eBay. have it on eBay. Mm-hmm. For, they're an eBay seller, like whatever. That's their thing, um, just like we are. And they're like, yeah, you got to come pick it up. You know, unless you're like, I've known people that bought stuff and they were like, oh, they're shipping it from Connecticut and I live in California. I'm like, cool. That's amazing that you can afford that. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not. Yeah. So I've, I've just always wondered because I've never looked for furniture on eBay. You can search local pickup. You can do a radius. You can uh-huh. say um, search your zip code with a radius of like 50 miles or 10 mm-hmm. miles or whatever. Mid-century modern chair. And it'll be like, okay, and you can search from closest. You're like, what's closest to me or what's lowest price? And it'll say, um, you know, 100 miles from your zip code. So they don't make it obvious, but you can do that. Because there's some people that only sell on eBay. That's right. Yeah. Um, so if you're looking for something special, um, I've sold. So when I've replaced beds, um, there there was a, a couple wooden bed, like wooden antique beds that I bought for the rentals. And I was like, oh, this bed's way too small. It was like a twin size bed. I'm like, I can't use this in my rental. And I sold it on eBay because I wanted to appeal to people who are far away that were willing to either have it 
picked up by a trucking company, they're willing to pay for that or um, just come pick it up or pay me to ship it. Like mm-hmm. there are times where people were like, Vir- I live in Virginia, so Virginia is huge. Yes. They're like, oh, I live down by like um, Newport News. And mm-hmm. I'm like, that is a very long way for me. However, I'm going to charge you this much and I'm going to make it like a scavenging trip. Yes. So I've yeah. done that. So people do that. But um, that's just the resale side of it. So something I went to recently that I wanted to mention is I went to the Brimfield Antique Show. Oh, Brimfield. Which is like, I mean, it's one of the biggest antique in markets the world. in the world. Yeah, it's huge. It's roll big. <laughs> it's like and <laughs> real big. In terms of furniture sourcing, the m- reason why I want to mention it is it is... It's three times a year. It's yes. May, July, and September. Like so it's nice like weather. it's the only time. Yeah, like New this England. is New England. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what I, if I had a space that I was trying to turn into a rental in this area, go to Brimfield. I would go to Brimfield with a truck. You gotta have a truck. Like a, you have I to would, be willing to take stuff. I then. would just rent a U-Haul yep. van like a box truck. for the yep. day. And you could source, I mean, there is so much mid-century modern yeah. stuff there. Dressers, you know, bureaus, those are the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Couches, you know, credenzas. Credenzas, I mean, beds. lamps, yep. you know, lighting. Right, right lighting. The other important. thing that's there that's incredible is there is so much antique hardware, house hardware. Oh, that's so, so we're talking light fixtures but also doorknobs hinges handles handles, cabinet handles like cast iron like that so we were talking about wear and tear in the other episode you know you you want real antique stuff but you want the sturdy stuff and i have to say out of all of my searching on ebay for things like that hardware yeah you know there are a lot of people that sell antique hardware on ebay but what i loved about going to brimfield was it's just all there for you, you to look at at once. You know, yep. you can feel it. You can look at See it. See how big it is. You're like, this is the You know, right and it just, it was people, designers go from all over the yeah. world to New York field. especially. And it's open yeah. for an entire week. So oh, yeah. anyway, I just wanted to plug my uh, local antique I mean, local, like Bonanza. you said, people come from around the world. I mean, world. Martha Stewart goes, yeah. Ralph Lauren yeah. shows up with a crew of people. Like that literally, literally Yeah, happens. I mean, they, and I, you know, I yeah, bought a, so I bought funny. a rug while I was there this year and the rug dealer said, you know, within the first day of him being open, you know, five or six designers came and just bought a bunch of pieces. Oh my God. You know, so it, as far as antique selling goes too, I mean, it's just people... Pete, there were people there from California, totally. you know, Colorado. Totally. I mean, there are obviously a lot of New England dealers, but yes. it was it was all of North America was there. And what's interesting too, talking about antiques and mid century modern and finding stuff used, it gives this feeling of like comfort and lived in. But not, like, it's different than, like, getting a junky lazy boy at Goodwill. Like, that's, there's, like, a fine line that we mentioned where you're, like, I want it to feel homey and comfortable and, like, it got passed down through generations. Not everything has to feel, like, your bed doesn't have to feel like that. (laughs) But, like, you know, a farm table Mm -hmm. or a chair or a bench or a hook on the Mm -hmm. wall or a mirror You know, it has a feeling that it's not brand new from Ikea. Yes. The cool thing is you can mix those things. Yes. Like I have these, um, I have these antique pieces of wood that we refinished with these vintage hooks and it's right next to a brand new Ikea mirror. You know, not everything had to be rustic Mm -hmm. and old. It was like brand new, gorgeous, clean lines mirror next to like rustic wood. Looks great. Exactly. You know? I mean, I think for us, our aesthetic tends to be that mix of things. Yeah. And part of it is, I always think of it as like giving your eye and giving your yeah. mind a rest. Yeah. Because if everything is sort of one way, you get sort of saturated, yeah. right? So people who have log cabins and everything Everything's wood. <laughs> is naughty pine. Yeah, you're like, you know? ah! You're like, oh my God, I'm going to like die of naughty pine. But for me, I like to have places where your eye can rest. So it's like some white wall right. areas that don't necessarily have a million things Anything on them, on you know? Them. So just clean. having some like space to, to look at. 
I think is a good is a is a, a good mix of things. We stayed in a farmhouse in Virginia. You came to visit, and we were at an Airbnb, and it was comfortable and it was great. But it was like that shabby chic. She had signs everywhere. like industrial too. It, it had some like steampunk lighting mm-hmm. and stuff, and like steampunk like metal shelves. But then they would have this like funky farmhouse vibe. And the thing was, you can have both those things, but it was like every single light was steampunk. Every single surface was like barn wood. Every single ceiling was like fake tin, yes. silver tin. You're just like, it was like in a deluge of like senses and like every wall was painted and a crazy color. Yeah. You know, you were like, whoa. <laughs> and because it was such a small, it was actually quite a, a small, small house. space. Yeah, it was. The fixtures were oversized. They were big. You know, yeah. it was like, they were very like warehouse industrial. Yeah. You're like this room, like I'm bumping my head on the, literally right. I was bumping my head and on And you're it. like, this light fixture <laughs> doesn't, work doesn't need to be in this kitchen. It's like an industrial, <laughs> yeah. you know, so there, there are definitely times when the scale and the feel of things don't match the house itself. In. Right, exactly. Just for the sake of trying to get like a, an aesthetic. Right, their style. They're like, this is the style. And you're like, this is too much style. You're like, it's not like, and again, so we like to think about it in terms of like a signature piece or, sure. you know, some kind of focal point. So it's like you have a cool butcher block counter island, but you don't have everything look like that. Exactly. Right. You have some minimal touches to. Draw your eye to that. That's the special thing in the room, like a like a farm table. You're like, this is the cool, you know, special thing. I don't need like a farm table and a rustic farm wood wall and like rustic chit. You're like, that's too much. Like, let's get a little minimal around this. And you know, it's cool because you can you can source those things from all different places, you know, and uh, have it on a budget. You know, when we were looking at Jordan's house, giving him design advice, um, the video that we did showing our design services, you know, there were things that we sourced from Target. There were things that we sourced from like Rugs USA, you know, like there are ways in which you can stay within a budget Find actually nice items that are, you know, unique, unique and add to the space, but don't feel like cheesy when you mix. So you have, let's say, yeah, this is my favorite example, gorgeous farm table, but then you get a rug from Rugs USA or Wayfair and you're like, this is a super sturdy rug that's going to last through kids and dogs and et cetera, et cetera, and coffee spills. And if something tragic happens to it. Get rid of it and replace it. You're not like, that was a $500 right. antique yeah. Turkish rug. Right. Which I actually have some of those in my house. Yeah. Um, actually, I will be honest. Uh, don't You don't have to spend $500, but I've been to auctions where I will buy a rug that's worth thousands of dollars in if you look at our listing um for the apartment in the first photo in the living room i have like a 10 by 12 antique persian wool rug that is worth thousands of dollars if you bought it new or even bought it like in new york or whatever i bought it at an auction for three hundred dollars three hundred dollars that's not very much money and the thing about wool rugs you can spill wine you can spill coffee on it they clean up. Yes. It's actually incredible. I've had people spill wine and I come in with vinegar or hydrogen peroxide. It's gone. Well, because they're naturally dyed. Wool is yeah. an amazing thing. So yes, actually, so antique rugs are... Don't break the bank on them because yes. people want a lot of money for them. But if you find them in an auction or a place like Brimfield where you're mm-hmm. like, okay, this... The cool thing about antique rugs, too, this could be a whole episode. To me, the look of an antique rug is like magnified by the wear. So if there's wear and tear on an antique rug, like there's a ta- literally a tear, or there's a worn out part where like people had it in a hallway, I'm like, I love that look. Yeah, well, that's the thing about those rugs is sometimes they last hundreds, hundreds of years. Hundreds of years generate, like I'll look at some rugs and I'll be like, I'm pretty sure this is like, hundreds of years old like i've seen rugs that old and they're 
amazing and like like you said they're naturally dyed and you're like the colors are gorgeous they are gorgeous so you can so actually to talk about a showpiece that rug is the showpiece of, of that, that room yeah um and like my other chairs literally are from ikea yeah. in west elm and you and they can, look great and you can build around a piece like that you can build with around things it. that aren't as exciting the rug was the first thing we put in that room and we were like oh these chairs that are limited time at Ikea, it's like this, this like brown, they're kind of mid-century looking. They're brown, like raffia woven with like black metal um, legs. They look great on that rug. Yes. It's mid-century, but it's modern, but mm-hmm. it's like got this antique rug and you're like, that's a great combo and it was not very expensive. And people are like, <laughs> they walk in that room, they're like, oh my God. You're like, yeah, man, I just like put this together. It's like a couple hundred dollars. I mean, rugs can really make a yes. space. I The rug that I bought from Brinfield, yeah. I put it in our living room and we didn't have a rug in there. It changes the room. And my sweetie looked at it and goes, I could get into rugs. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, rugs are, it's funny that we started talking rugs at the end of this podcast. To me, rugs are equivalent to art. Yes. Because they are color pattern I mean, they are art. Yes. But they're on the floor, which is so interesting. You're not like, it's on the wall, on the wall, on the wall. You're like, you like lay this piece of art on the floor yes. and you bring the color, like the light bounces off from the windows and you're just like, it's, they're like magical. Yeah. You know, they can be magical. And it changes the whole room. And I mean, it, it, for better or worse, right? Like you go into a room with a, <laughs> and rug, a bad rug and you're like, <laughs> oh why, <my> God. <laughs> why, why did you choose this? Yeah. You know, I mean, you instantly feel bad. You're yeah, just like, you're like gross. Well, the Airbnb that we're sitting in right now recording this, um, has gorgeous like farm wood floors. They're actually beautiful. And, um, Jay was walking around last night and he's like, they need more rugs, Mm -hmm. which is funny because you're like, this is a gorgeous floor, but Mm -hmm. it can be accentuated with Yes. Sometimes you can feel like the expanse of a room is too much. I mean, again, we we could talk about scale forever, like the scale of a space, you know? And so sometimes rugs bring it it back to to a human scale, right? You're like, I'm in a room. I'm not in a, like a cathedral. An expanse of wood. Exactly. Yep. So, you know, just to keep in mind, uh, stay on budget. Don't break the bank. You can source from different places. You can have different styles. I mean, I bought stuff from Walmart. I mean, there are things where I'm like, that's a great lamp. Uh, it's at Walmart. Uh, I'm going to get it. You know, it's practical. It works. It's fine. Don't get everything from Walmart. Don't get everything from Target. Don't get everything from West Elm. Um, People will notice that. I would love to do an episode that's just talking about how to navigate estate sales and auctions. For sourcing. I feel like that would be a really interesting topic. Yep, because yeah, for newbies, you gotta get ready. <laughs> yeah, for newbies doing estate Tax sales snacks. and auctions, it's yeah. just a whole different universe. Right. It's not just going to the store. No. And you, you know what's funny too, though? Like even shopping at Ikea. I mean, if, you, if you've never been to Ikea, which I don't know if there are people that exist that are like that, same thing. I mean, you, you got to prepare because it's not just going to Target where there's like three aisles and you're like, oh, there's a chair and a lamp. It's like <laughs> warehouses upon warehouses. <laughs> yeah. It's like walking through a dollhouse. But anyway. Yeah. We, we could, so yeah. I digress. Um, <laughs> that is a whole other. Ep- that's actually a great episode. But so, yeah. So we hope this helped. And, uh, you know, of course, we're always available for design advice. This is what we love to talk about. Um, that's not perf.com. That's it. That's it. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Shampoo and Booze at shampooandbooze.com. As usual, send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com and we'll do our best to cover the topics you care about. Don't forget about our design and listing advice services. Head over to our services page at notperf.com to book your design advice session.